Yes, uh, welcome back, everybody. What's going on? Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, joining us. <laughs> the wonderful, the amazing, the highly intelligent, the omnipotent, the, <laughs> the omnipresent Christopher Bernard. <laughs> oh, geez. The terrific, the amazing, the always inspirational, motivational, my main man, Neil Quinto. Welcome back, everybody. Always good to see you. This podcast show you never heard of, video show you never heard of until now. Until right now. Until right now. Until right now. Check us out all week for content. So welcome back. Yes, uh, quick coronavirus updates. Uh, nothing crazy, but uh, it seems that um, Brazil is taking over as the uh, third highest amount of cases now. Overtakes the UK. Yes, third highest number of COVID cases. Uh, health minister says, or ministry says, 16,792 people in Brazil have died of the novel coronavirus. And now the United States is thinking of um, having a travel ban with Brazil. So I'm sure they're going to get a lot of heat over it. Wow. That, right? And um, the other was uh, we're hearing that the Canada and USA uh, border uh, ban will be shut for another 30 days, which I believe it says something like June 21st. And uh, interestingly enough, <laughs> um, Prime Minister Trudeau said, okay, June 21st, that's firm and we'll relook at it. And then uh, apparently President Trump is like, nah, 21st sounds good, but it could be earlier. <laughs> Uh, so which one is it, right? And I, I love how uh, they contradict each other, but because what do you call it? Uh, political pageantry, right? Political pageantry, political puppetry. Yeah, it's it's yeah. entertaining. It is a bit of a. I think it's them having fun. They gotta have some fun. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I don't know. So how are you coping? I know you're done with this. Oh yeah, I've been done for like three weeks, and uh, I'll, I'm, I'll frequently go like for groceries and stuff now, and it doesn't bother me. Mask is not even a thought. I'll wear gloves, but you know, washing hands. I notice I'll even wash it maybe twenty percent less. But you know, habits are still there. Um, but it's just like I, I feel like I've hit my limit as to what I could do at home, and it, and we all have to kind of get back. And normal, and you know, back to traveling and just being and having that the the old freedoms that we used to have. How about you? Uh, same. I'm just trying to um, stick to the routines that are, I guess, getting me through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not worry too much about the world uh, I'm supposed to go back to. You know what I mean? It's kind of like I know it's all going to change, and I'm just kind of preparing myself mentally for how that's all going to look without trying to get ahead of myself. It's kind of like that. Okay. I'm good. I'm getting out there. Like, I mean, I'll go grocery shopping and like, I'll use a sanitizer, but I, I will do the mask. I, it's that psychological. Like I don't want to be. Yeah, we're bargaining now. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm like, okay, listen, I'm comfortable with this right now. I can do the sanitizer, but I'm not doing the mask because I'm safe. I'm fine. I got to do that like daily. Like, uh, your, your mind will convince you and put you at ease just as much as it will freak you out. Right. So exactly. once you get tired of freaking yourself out, you're like, okay, let's do it the other way because you know, it's not, it's not to the degree of like, I, if I literally breathe in the air when I walk outside, that's it, I'm sick. You know, you're just like, okay, like, let's take some chances, so to speak, because you can turn anything small into 50-50. Absolutely. If, if it was a 2% chance, you can talk yourself into, well, 50-50. And I'm like, once you start doing that, I'm like, that's not the way to live. So, no, it, everything becomes that then. Yeah, you can't turn every... Um, because people don't want to answer with certainty. I find that a lot with professionals, right? This is the way we're taught, which totally sucks. It's like, you want to learn about tax matters, talk to an accountant. You want to learn about legal matters, talk to a lawyer, a doc medical, talk to a doctor. 
And then even within that, they're like, I can't, it's 99.9%, but because it's not 100, <laughs> what, 50, like you can't give me a definitive so that, you know, our, I've always said this, like um, we create more stress in the not knowing. People are good at dealing with victory and defeat. You can actually deal with defeat as long as you have closure and you know, and you're, you're free to move from it, right? You, you've got your freedom back to act. But yeah. it's when people are in that on the fence and they don't know, that's where you're more stressed out. And because our society is so like, don't want to give you the definitive, no one wants to get sued. No one wants to say 100%. So now everybody's back to 50% or in our minds, it actually makes it worse. Absolutely. And that's what people are focused in on. Yeah. You know, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Absolutely. Fear is false evidence appearing real. So eventually you got to apply that and like, just be like, let's go, let's go back to work. Let's go just, you know, what the indicators are, are not true. We're just making it up in our own minds and, uh, you know, not living the life you're supposed to lead. Absolutely. So yeah, and that, and I share that exact same perspective, and that's why I convinced myself that I've got to start looking at the good that has come out of all this. Yeah. Right. The the good that has come out of being able to be with the family. The good that's come out of slowing life down and only focusing on you know what's of value to you in that moment type thing. Right. And I had that theory of, okay, my life was a bunch of different systems that I was attending to, and my attention was here, there, and everywhere. And this system, that system, that system. Okay. So I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking simulation theory. I'm like, okay, the science proves simulation theory, and this is a closed system. If you throw a virus in a closed system, what happens? Chaos. I'm like, yeah, this is chaotic. So this this is a chaotic time. So I'm thinking, wow, maybe simulation theory must be right just because of the complex amount of systems that I'm just constantly attending to on a daily basis. And I needed this thing to come and disrupt those systems. right? And I, I can could not have planned this you know nothing that has happened i could not have planned at all it's just sort of you know happened and you roll the punches and you're just like okay why why is this all happening so i thought okay if simulation theory is correct and this is all just a big fancy game with varying degrees of stakes you got your high stakes games very high stakes game low stakes game where most people tend to play in this low stakes sort of thing. See. How then can you get the majority of people to want to change without uh, too much kicking and screaming because you want to, I don't know, you, know, you want everybody to evolve and get to a place where they're, I know, sake of argument, moving up Mazel's hierarchy of needs, right, to self-actualization, -actual basically. You want to take a population, a populace, and do that across the board. doesn't matter your nation, your country, whatever. That's just what you generally want for human beings. In order for that to happen, you're going to have this grand scale disaster pandemic that's going to help things shift so it's like yeah nobody plans for this nobody wants this to happen nobody wants bad things to happen to good people nobody wants any of that however life we accept is what it is and it can be unfair shit happens <laughs> and you got to make the most of it yeah absolutely so in this time where I was able to slow down and start thinking and processing uh, the different things that are going on and have my attention, I'm like, okay, if for whatever reason I get sick and all this stuff shuts down, 
all these processes, all these simulations, all where my attention is going, irons I have in the fire. If everything stops, what then? What happens to my loved ones, family and friends? What happens to all of that? It's like, well, the show must go on for them, right? It's like, well, it just, cycle repeats itself. Things have to continue. You can't, it doesn't stop for you. So, like, okay, well, this virus, this thing that everybody's talking about that has everybody's attention right now, currently pandemic, this thing has to be um, dealt with. And I can either succumb to what everybody's telling me I should think about it, or I could choose what it is for me and make it work. And so I'm like, okay, this is my simulation. This is my life. Everybody's in their own simulation. And this thing that impacts everybody on the planet, um, not equally, I will say that, I can agree, not equally, in different degrees, uh, still needs to be processed and still needs to be accounted for. So uh, this pandemic has to be, has to be, at the end of the day, in order to move past it, in order to transcend it, has to be a good thing. There has to be some good that comes out of it. So in my simulation, I said, making a choice, going to see something positive, focus on that, keep the wheels moving on this thing and keep my focus on where it needs to be and keep pushing, keep going. Good. That's my, that's my simulation theory rant. I love it. That's beautiful. And and now I get where, and what you're coming, because as we did the pre-show here and we're discussing, okay, what we want to talk about and we're looking at certain videos that we want to play. I think it was better that you did the explanation as opposed to us watching videos too. Right. Like, and I know you caught on to that. Uh, so that's beautiful. Everybody has their own life, their own point of view, their own simulation, like you're saying. So what were those things for you? Because I actually made a list of stuff that I skills that I had to learn while being off, uh, which took me out of my comfort zone or just, I was just forced to. So it, again, turning this uh, negative uh, pandemic into something positive, which is learning new skills uh, overcoming certain fears, asking the difficult questions and taking actions, you know, that, uh, that I wouldn't normally take, right. If, if everything was hunky dory and comfortable in the old, yeah. environment, I would have never, uh, attempted certain things. And I made a list of, uh, some of those things. Um, oh, buddy, you gotta share it. You gotta share it. Not now. I think we should revisit that. But, uh... like, one of them right now is this it is like, um, doing the podcast in a video form where, you know, I used to think all the time, like, why would I do a video? What do I have to say? That's interesting. But I'm like, we do the podcast all the time. And I think that's interesting. And what's the difference? Absolutely. I'm recording my voice anyway, whatever, like, you know, put on, <laughs> put on some pants and record about like, <laughs> it's not being embarrassed with like how you look. It's like just <laughs> record. And it, put on the pants part. I'm like, nah, just a shirt. You only see in this. <laughs> it's good. The neck up video button. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, dude, what the main one uh, is this is using Zoom, using YouTube, using social uh, to share ideas and thoughts and be, you know, somewhat of a thought leader uh, or at least share. Uh, my experience, your experience uh, through this is storytelling. We're sharing our story of what's going on right now. And I'm like, that's got to be valuable or interesting to someone. Absolutely. Infotainment or either entertaining you or informing you. And hopefully that's what we're looking to do. But I, without this pandemic, I don't, you know, when was I going to do it? I always planned to, but this forced us to do it because our will to stay on top of this uh, always supersedes like, nah, I don't want to do it. I shouldn't try it. Like, I'm like, no, we got to, we got to, we've committed to this. We, we, we meet every week. Uh, you can't come over anymore. So let's find a way to do it. And, uh, you know, I just, it, it wasn't hard. Um, I wasn't, uh, the fear, like I said, is whatever you put yourself out there. That's, we chose to do this and we're doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, see, this is what I say. It was inspirational. 
Always <laughs> motivation. You, know, you know what I'm finding though too, like in times like this, when uh, someone doesn't take action or sits back or it's like, you know, doesn't adopt your point of view. It's like really influencing people is a very difficult thing. And I think you get more haters than you get, you know, inspiration and, and, and followers. Like, I, I think I'm realizing now is things that I'm interested in. There's very few people that are interested in it as well. You know what I mean? That really you strike a chord with and you're like, okay, let's, I'm on board. Let's do that. Let's do it. Absolutely. Which is why they say like, you need to really, you know, uh, create a circle of people with common interests because it, when, and if you do it alone, it's, it can be a very lonely place and, and it, you don't really reinforce what you're doing is uh, yeah. worthwhile. But when you find like-minded people, it's like that energy spins off of each other, right? Absolutely. And the magic happens because now you're in that element with other people and you're building and you're just building and building and creating and it gets better and better and better. And I, I don't blame people either because I mean, especially with respect to social, like you're just looking at stuff all the time and you're like, I don't want to see this. Like this guy's post the same stuff. Like, you know, like I don't see your dog. I don't see your dog's birthday or, you know, like, you know, yeah. you know, like what, you know, you're not really interested in that person's story, but it's up to you whether you choose to follow it, watch it or not. Right. But yeah. because we're inundated with ads and posts and, spam and email now like it's it requires more contact than ever to resonate and hit people where you know it's they're at the right place at the right time thinking the same thing as you and then you connect but which is why i think they say like you got to do and share at all times of the day and all the time and be omnipresent like we always talk about Yes, yes. And you, like I said, that passion, that passion that you have for this thing is so, it's so palpable. It's there. It's, it's evident. You can feel it. <laughs> Thank you. And I know listeners can hear it. I know they can. So they keep coming back. You know, but I, I guess, and I was thinking about this. I'm like, what, what am I passionate about? Like, really, at the end of the day, every, every job's a customer service thing, you know? And it, it, yeah. it, oh, Absolutely. You just get like, like, what am I doing? And now it's not like the payback. Like in the beginning, sometimes you'll even take work just for the learning experience. Yes. And, you know, you obviously you work for the pay, but then that's never going to be enough. And I was just watching a Jeff uh, Bezos motivational, uh, like splices and compilation of like all these different conversations and speeches that he had. He's like, yeah, you have to find a passion. Then I, then I hear people say like, well, you can't, you know, you can't just look for your passion either. And, and passion's not enough to get you through it. But then when he said it, and I mean, because of his accomplishment level, I'm like, like, yeah, you, you do have to have a passion for what you do. A calling. He called it a calling on top of Absolutely. The, you know, working for money is never good. There's never not enough money to make enough. There's not enough money to do it just for the money absolutely and yeah your passion will get you through the days you don't want to be doing it but if it's a true vocation or calling and, and you're in, enthralled in it and even the nuance you want to improve like not just the you know the basic to the broad to whatever uh when you really are into something that you are passionate about then time flies and yeah you're in the middle of the world you even think of it like you would yeah you're just you were just in a vibe, you're in your zone, and that is that flow state. Yes. And I think very few people actually are lucky to, to have that, to be honest, because the, some of us have to be workers. You know what I mean? Some, of, some people have to do the jobs that others don't want to do. But then you have to have your people that break through and, you know, create industries and revolutionize uh, methods and systems um, so, you know, it, it's up to us. That's the beauty of it. We have the right to choose, but during a pandemic, you're like, you don't feel like you have the freedom to choose. So it makes that's it, right. it reinvigorated me. That's for sure. So there's skills that I learned and it, it, it created, uh, a zest for wanting to get back out and do and be better than, than what I was doing and, and before. That is incredible. And I think that lends itself like that feeling like I, 
I have that feeling, you have that feeling, I know our listeners have that feeling, there's many people that have had that feeling. So with that feeling being prevalent and present, something needed to happen to create that shift. Something had to have pushed people collectively all together in that sort of direction. An awakening. I, th- I feel like, yeah, the people say, you know, you were woke or this is an awakening. I, I, I really feel that because I Absolutely. have myself to learn a lot in this time that we've had uh, where, yes, I feel felt limited, but I felt unlimited in terms of the things that I could have uh, discovered and studied because I, I don't know, I've just been awfully attentive and I've been looking for it and I that uh, reticular activator, I, I activated it. And I was looking for it and I was looking uh, for different skills and information to make me better at what I do. Right. And, um, it, you know, I'm, I'm very much the type of person that when I find something, I'll jump into it and I'll like study it and I'm nonstop and I'll listen, I'll listen to it all night. Like I, I listen to podcasts to go to bed, you know, I, I that's incredible. See all night. Like if I, if, if I'm on my sleeping time is learning time, actually, you know, <laughs> Uh, that's perfect, though. But that's the thing. You, like you said, people don't geek out about things anymore, and that's what's missing. People need to just follow that passion and say, you know what, I'm interested. I need to go all the way with this thing and just geek out and just get into the details of things and and share that passion with everybody else. And that gets other people involved. Like, oh, wow, okay, cool, I see. I see why you do this. I see what draws you yeah and, it, and because it's you and your own body you don't see yourself you don't remove yourself from your body you're not going to see it's very difficult to envision what you're doing and to see like it because what do they say communication is almost entirely like uh, uh visual right like it's it's actions not just words it's in fact it's more actions and um, and body language, body language more than words, right? That's right. Be yourself. And I know in my mind I'm reacting and I'm interested, but if I could see myself outside of my body and see how I reacted and how into what I'm doing, then maybe I could see the passion. But it's like you have to be aware of, uh, on top of it, you know, you got to have to decide to say to yourself, like, what am I doing day to day? What's attracting me? What are my habits? Um, but yeah, it, it's been, this time has been a growing experience and I hope I come out on the other side better. Um, Absolutely. And I've been, you know, pulling together facts to overcome certain fears of my own to support wanting and taking actions on things that I haven't done before, but I'm very excited to do now. Oh, that's incredible, man. That, like, this is what I said, like, oh, he's inspirational. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Oh. Well, I'm glad you understand it because obviously other people will listen or watch this and I don't know if they're going to understand it, but. Um, Absolutely. I'll totally get it. And then totally. Uh, I, I think a lot of this stuff is, I have to catch you at the time of your life when you're wanting it to, like I said, be aware of it. And if you don't open that up um, and you just come to, I just going to do my day to day and whatever. And I actually get kind of, frustrated with people that don't want to go back and like you like this i mean you're doing the same thing anyway when you go to work you just go to work and it, that's right it's not to judge but you judge let's face it people judge each other or like i, I want to get let's throw that on the table like people judge yeah, me. Like, absolutely that's every day is judgment day every day you, you shouldn't be comparing but it's it's just like if i'm having a conversation with you and and it's like you don't want to go back. You like this the way it is. We have no freedom. And, and when I listen and I'm, I'll give respect to the reasons, but um, you know, you just know where people are getting their information. And- <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Absolutely. And you know, the mindset, yeah. you know, the mindset of those people and you're like, okay, I'm like, I know, I know your angle. You probably go to a couple sources and whatever they say is that's it. And I'm like, you know what? You believe what you want to believe. I'll believe what I want to believe. I don't get into any arguments, but I'm just exactly. I'm attentive to what others are doing. And it helps it because mostly it helps shape like what I decide to do. 
Exactly. Exactly. You can listen and without taking on the opinion of others. It's like, okay, I, I get it, but I strongly disagree. <laughs> a, a lot of the time, I actually go against what the mainstream does. Because I'm like, someone wants us to go that way when we should be going this way. <laughs> it's Exactly. It's like I get you. Do, everybody that wants to be guided, they're guiding us this way. Why are they keeping us away? <laughs> I'm that guy. I'm like, okay, well, let's go that way. <laughs> we got to go that way. It's taking too long. So, like, you know, you can easily get comfortable in this uh, scenario and want to, you know, be at home forever. But like, what does does that do? anybody and your family and your life and whatever it is but i get it not everybody has to have aspirations or goals absolutely want to go back or they're not you know maybe your job or your career or your whatever it is you're pursuing is not worth going back to then i, I think there's sadly there's a problem with that so absolutely i agree i agree i think people that aren't looking forward are going to have the toughest time with this thing and those people are not looking forward that will have a tough time will be constantly looking ahead for the next pandemic and preparing for that instead of living their life right. you know what i mean they're just caught in this in their own oh it's gonna end again like oh it's coming it's coming it's like you didn't learn you, you learned nothing from well, it's like living in the drama now Having said that, I, I did say, okay, maybe you don't have something to look forward to, but you, if you take this as an opportunity to create a new situation for yourself and you absolutely a new set of skills and you said, that's all I'm saying, right? Like, okay, you can be comfortable with it. That's fine. Like whatever you choose is on you. Um, but yeah, like if it's you something you're happy with, why wouldn't you take this time? Cause there is some time you got to be able to eke out. Uh, and even when you are back on your regular routine, you have to make the time. Time is not, you know, it's uh, two big things that come to mind that I've learned during this time off is both time and money. It's already laid out, right? Money is printed. You don't actually have to, remember I said, you don't have to make it. You got to go out and get it or earn it. That's right. The same thing with time. You don't make time. Like you can't create more hours in the day, Right. You have to fit everything else in. And what my, I mean by that is like, you know, if, if your health and exercise is important to you, then put it at the forefront of the day and do it earliest. You know what I mean? That's how That's you right. make time, I suppose. But it's like sometimes we say it and um, the actual meaning from how we apply it is different. So when people use that phrase, make time, it's kind of frustrating because it's like, uh, I know what you mean. You're not taking, you're not sacrificing that extra hour sleep with that new activity that you could or should be doing, let's say. That's right. It's more like you're, you're interpreting it like we need 28 hours in a day, not 24. <laughs> like, yeah, that's right. It's like, no, 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 no. It's, it's time management here. We're talking about managing time appropriately. I, I really get to appreciate it and really beat the sun up and make the most out of their time are the ones that do exactly that. It, the key word is prioritize. They prioritize what they do within that day. And that's right. Day by day. You always hear motivational talks where they say, you know, like, uh, you know, a billionaire and a thousand air all have the same amount of time a day. Well, how come one guy gets so much more done than the other? Right. It's what we choose to do and how we feel that. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, you know, it, it's interesting. Some people with more wealth will be like, I have, it's easier. It's easier at this level. I, I actually have more time at this level. And you would think I wouldn't, you think I'd be preoccupied with more problems and this and that, but no, it's, you know, sometimes um, the payoff is exponential. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Sometimes that's right. That's right. I'm going to give you like a bigger payoff where you would think like, Oh man, I, I put that up. I risk it all. Um, you know, and sometimes it's, it's pushing yourself out of that comfort zone. Like we're talking about. And you got to get comfortable. Like you said, like the pandemic was able to force you to push you out of your comfort zone. And a lot of people that are able to do that are able to take advantage of that exponential 
growth. Like you said, it's not one to one. So you got to push yourself out of that comfort zone to take that risk for that bigger reward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember this for a time that um, yeah, forced me to get better. Absolutely. That's how I'm using this and thinking of this time. It's like, oh, this is time for me to improve my craft. This is time for me to get better at what I do. This is time for me to get better at what I love. This is time for me to focus better, more, and to relax more. Also, it's like, slow down your pace. Slow down, slow down, slow it down, slow it down. Right. You know, it's not that go, go, go. I don't have to be go, go, go anymore. I can still get more done without being go, go, go. That's like my biggest, like, oh, wow. Okay, cool. That was your biggest find? Anything else you want to add, like, skill-wise? Well, I actually, there's, not, there's more than that, but I, I would say for in terms of being um trying to be productive i that was my biggest i don't have to go 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 to get more done it's just it's just managing my time and paying attention to how i how i feel in that in those specific times and spaces that i'm like okay it's is you know time to be i'm in dad mode so like okay what you know, three hours, I got to be in dad mode. You know, how's that going to be? You know, I got, I got two hours to be in creative mode. How's that going to be? How's that going to play out? Like, it's, it's like, okay, I got to manage this time because it's all got to get done. It's all going to just keep going and going and going, but I just got to switch the hat, switch gears and keep going. Really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The reason I can't really share, because there aren't too many skills that I've acquired. Like, I guess a lot of the things need a lot of effort and nuance. So they're very general skills, let's say. But I, I would say I've acquired more, a lot more knowledge, working knowledge about a bunch of different things that I've, the rabbit hole that I've dealt into this last nine weeks. That's, that, that's incredible. A lot more uh, intentional about what direction uh, life will go through from here. And uh, not that I didn't have it, but like, you know, <laughs> You know, the start of the year, everybody was like, 2020, get that money. 2020, it's my year, it's my year. And then March uh, 16th, 17th came and it was like, oh, oh man, I don't even care if it's my best year. I just want to survive. <laughs> so, oh, you know, like I said, it'll be, it will be interesting to see who thrives. I was talking about which country will thrive, but it'll be interesting to see on individual levels who is thriving after this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, it's amazing that you, the enthusiasm was there. It got cut off briefly. Uh, but I think actually revisiting approach and adding more knowledge base uh, helped me to reignite that in a time that you could easily just have been ap totally apathetic and just been like, there goes this year. Well, you know, you, again, it's make the best of the situation. Um, you know, it's uh, when people are, uh, let's, I'm trying to think. <laughs> it's a really good one. Go ahead, take over here. I'm trying to remember um, the. the uh, I was just going to, well, I was going to take it to, um, I hope when people are listening and they're tuning in and thinking, yeah, you know what? Life is getting back to normal. Um, I hope they're not fighting for that old normal. That's going to keep them from doing nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they'll be like, well, no, it's, it's not, things are weird. Yes, they're weird, but you can still progress and move to where you want to go with your, whatever it is you're doing, whatever it is you're interested in. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people are gearing up to be angry about not getting back to the normal that kept them from doing whatever it is they claim we're going to do. So it's like, ah, nah, nah, nah. Don't, don't talk to me about normal yet. <laughs> Hold on. Ah, I don't hear it yet. Hold on. Talk to me about what's new, like the possibility of where you're going now. I think that's, that's more the conversations I want to have you know, with, with people, not the, did you hear the death toll? Did you hear the numbers? I'm like, ah. well, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I feel like it's, there's few and far between. 
the people that like pay attention to that and the people that want to remain optimistic because it's too easy to get wrapped up in the other stuff, right? Exactly. Like, talking about the stock market and stuff like this and, and finance. Uh, be fearful when people are greedy. Be greedy when people are fearful. Good point. Like, you know, like the, how they say, you know, when people buy during a, a contraction and then people sell. Yes. The opposite. You got to go against your opposite instincts, right? So. That's right. And it's not just about finance and the stock market. And this is, it can be an accounting of like your own skill set and, and, and everything else that's going on because it's, it is your life. What's your ideal life like? Um, you know, and, and, and another amazing uh, set of criteria um, that you have to be mindful of is, is your attitude. Your yeah, attitude, huge, huge. Your, attitude, your approach and your action. Absolutely. One of them thriving. You can have a great attitude without, you know, a proper approach, but you're taking action and, and that enthusiasm will get you through. But eventually when that wanes and or a pandemic happens then you know it, your attitude can't take you through that your approach sh starts showing up and it's like okay why, why is this this guy was on fire uh to begin with and now it looks like they appear to be lazy and that's not true it's just you got to have all three of those things absolutely firing at different speeds right yeah like it, and it's not just attitude on its own or maybe your approach is good, but your attitude sucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It can be a combination of things. That happens so many times. With both attitude and approach, but they take no action too, right? So it's, hey, some people are great at planning, right? And great at attitude. And yeah. That's right. Let me hear that plan again. Right. Like every couple months. It's like, they like, oh, no, that sucked. It wasn't for me. I'm like, you didn't even do it enough time. Oh, I know. I know. You cubed. But it'll be interesting to hear how the talk is for the rest of this year. Are people going to be blaming the pandemic for not being successful? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I still blame it for a hiccup. Oh, what, I, what are you going to do? I think it, it was a natural course corrector for many. I will. I, and that's where I'm at with that. I'm like, this is a natural. Because you know when you got a blind spot, you don't know your blind spots, right? So it's like, I was heading in this direction, and then life made me go that way. Mm -hmm. But I still think I should have went, it's like, no, you should have went this way. Like, life just went, boom, good. Because you'll find going that way, it'll be an easy, it'll, easier route to get to wherever. Yeah. Uh, Naturally, we want to take the easiest route. Th that's right. Point of least yeah. resistance. To, to be frank, I think we know our blind spots. Like, obviously, there's some that you're not going to know, but I, I think we know what uh, is our own demise, you know, in a lot of instances. And, you know, like you said, like we take the easier route about it. But I, frankly, I think we don't give people as much credit as we should. Like, you know, I don't know is not a great excuse. Like, you know, it's. Yeah. I, I, I just. I think we're super self-aware. All you do is think about yourself. So how do you know you're blind? That's so about? true. That's so true. All right. It's just if if you don't pursue self-improvement, then you don't face the questions to ask yourself that. You know what I mean? Like if you don't care, if you don't, the first thing about change is you have to recognize that you need change. You have to want to change. Right? There's people yes. that listen to this podcast and watch this video and they're going to watch this and they're going to think like, I don't need to change. And yeah, they're like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I am. just went through a pandemic. Oh, yes. he thinks like that no change is necessary, right? Like year after year after year cannot be the same. It's either going to be worse or better, right? That's right. There's no such thing as the same. There is no such, that's right. It's like, it, it if you're not looking to change, you, you're staying the same. And if you're staying the same, you're not growing. And if you're not growing... Backwards to me, right? So, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, not, not to make this into profound, but I know we get into these talks all the time, but, um, you know, this is part of the study and uh, the things that uh, I, you know, get lost in delving into and very uh, interested in because 
I'm so self, I'm so introspective. Like I, I really have to know myself to be able to control myself. And, and I've been trying to ask myself the same, uh, look what we're talking about, the difficult questions. Yes. Um, to expose my blind spots. And that's why I said, I, I think we know them because I'm able to write down my own. I know what they are. Right. Absolutely. I think, I think you hit it. I think when you're able to be self-reflective and spend that time with yourself to think and ask those hard questions, like asking like, Hey, who is this person? Like who, who am I really? You know, you're, that's what you're really touching on. That's what you're trying to figure out is digging that, deeply into that subject it is i mean it's an endless subject right? it's just, you, you realize I, your collection of ideas and thoughts and influences from so many things so when you are doing that introspection you're also looking outward at the things that reflect who you are right you're looking at your family looking at your friends your loved ones you're you're you, you know, your partner, your kid, you, you're looking at everybody that touches you in a certain way. You're like, that is a part of me. That's who I am. And who am I to them? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just thinking, like, how does my kid see me? Like, oh, huh. That's a, uh, who am I to this kid? You know, that, that, that was a recent thought just kind of blew my mind. I'm like, I probably don't appear the way I want to appear to my kid. <laughs> Was it like I'm probably some like bumbling idiot? Like really? Like <laughs> yeah, I, I think we make it more complicated than what. It's oh, like, for sure. How your kid sees you right now today. Um, but you know, I I know growing up that you know I had immigrant parents, um, kind of figured it out for themselves by doing. But they kind of went, you know, the same path, like I said, that, uh, I, like I said, I'm not an activist, I'm not a contrarian, so to speak, but, you know, I just never want to do the same things that everybody wants to do. I know that's in my nature. My, one of my biggest fears is just being labeled like, oh, you're just the same as everybody else, which is happening a lot, actually, in my industry. So that's why I'm trying to be unique and do it better, right? Absolutely. But oh, like, brilliant. Growing up, you know, like, I always wished I had a mentor, someone who could tell me exactly, you know, some of the things that I've been able to figure out for myself. But that's the key to life is that I've seen people in different workplaces, my own workplace where I've worked before, like they've excelled because they figured out how to maneuver. They got the, the keys to the different levels. Training day. <laughs> you want to walk a higher path, son? I got the keys to get you there. Like, <laughs> When Denzel's talking to you. Oh, love it. Love it. Okay, so someone can give you the keys. And, and I guess, I don't know if I would. It just eventually, uh, I found out that whatever it is, whatever path you're going, you have to, you actually have to do it yourself. No one, there's rarely anybody that wants to just mentor you and give it to you. Like, And that's the that's challenge, right. challenge, and the challenge and the key to life is continually it, it, taking an interest feeding yourself information, uh, following. And that's to me now is the passion is, is like, okay, I've got to, in order to break that mold and not be like everybody else, my passion and my interest. And I guess that's what it is. My interest in a certain method system knowledge, that's my passion. And that's what keeps me going is learning how to do certain things and then gaining the confidence by doing them, but you got to do it for yourself and by yourself. Um, you can have a support system of other people that do absolutely, it, but no, absolutely, one's literally going to take your hand and, and, and teach you how to do things. It's amazing, and like I try to share newfound knowledge, and it doesn't exactly excite people either. So I'm like, is it me, or it's just like I'm realizing that it's human nature not to just. Uh, yeah, it's really where they're at. It's kind of like the first thing that people would you tell someone like. I have this pill that's going to heal you. It, it starts with doubt. So it's, <laughs> it does start with, that's it. And then catching them at the right time. So that's what, I'm, that's what I've learned in this time is like, you can't just become an influencer right away. Like it's, it's amazing. That's right. It starts small. It's like they're only going to see you for who you were like when they first met you. So it's like, 
you're probably actually trying to appeal to an audience that doesn't know you. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's so true. That is the nail on the head. Wow. You just hit the nail on the head. That, that was a beautiful aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we've been able to talk about it. Um, yeah, me too. Oh my God, that was a great conversation. Like it's, you know, like I said, like skills, okay, skills learned, but it's more information obtained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm excited to go back. There's some things that I want to do. Uh, I'm a little nervous about them, a little scared, but I know that there's, you know, uh, no risk it, no biscuit. Right, like you gotta, you know. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's it's like you can't really prepare for. You can't prepare for it. So it's kind of like you know, I am, you know, nervous about what's going on, but you're ready to move forward and just ready to face whatever is out there, whatever, however it looks, is how it's going to look. And you know, I know I always look for how to make the best of the the situation. Right. There's got to be something that will benefit me in that situation. I just got to focus on that and boom, move forward. Exactly. Because that's what living is. Got a lot that's of, what it is. You know, like it's, and self-improvement is a lifelong pursuit. And, and yeah, that's what self-improvement is living, right? It, that's all oh, self-improvement is living. Oh, powerful. Well, if you're, if you're not expanding, if you're not, you know, it's, we overlook that you can grow by just doing a little bit every day. And if you're not doing it every day and before you know it, you look at a finished product of someone else's and you're like, oh my God, I can't get that. I can't possibly get that. But what we're forgetting is that it's just, they just did the same thing over and over every single day. Man, yeah, it. that's right. Um, Made it a habit. Yeah. And you can't get caught up about your start time. Some people start earlier, some start later like there's stuff that i've done for a long time <laughs> you know um that that i can't someone who asked to do the same as me I, I just can't expect them to start where i'm at currently and, and, and that's right like i want what someone who has done over decades i want that so badly for myself it's like but you got to start somewhere so that's right and you got to accept where you're starting. You're, you're starting, you have to start somewhere. And it may not look like that end goal. That's fine. This is where I'm at. And there's nothing wrong with that. I know that I'm moving forward slowly. That's fine too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pick up momentum later. I'll get there. Yeah, it's human nature to be impatient. Uh, you know, you want it. You want it right away. You want it now. So yeah. consumed with you know, start times and stuff like that. Just be thankful. Yeah. You I don't want to wait. Ah. No, you really don't. You know what I mean? Like you're like, you know, when, especially once you start feeling the pain of developing that new thing, that activity, that habit. Or yes. That, you're like, like I can't eat chocolate for how long? <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on. This is, this sucks. I want to do it now. I want to do it now. So, you know, it's, uh, it's just turning a negative into a positive. Absolutely. All right. Like it's, that's it. And hopefully, I guess, another two, three weeks, I think we'll be back. It sounds like June just passed. Yes, it's out of like June. A target date for another phase of opening. So. Yes. Let's it'll, be, it'll be good. It'll be good. I think so. Right in the midst of uh, summer. Not mids, but uh, the start of summer. And, start of summer, yeah. You know, we'll 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 stay with you guys and check in on how you're doing, and you can check in on how we're doing. Um, Absolutely. Did you up um, to inspire you to uh, to pursue the same? Like, because just the, the alternative sucks. You can't give up. Right. Exactly. Can't lose if you never quit. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I think Meg, I mean, we're, I love the conversation we had about COVID now. Um, we're going to end it, but I do want to touch on later schools. They just announced that schools are um, closing for the year. So um, I had some family that were in schools that were still doing the online stuff. And so that is changing, you know, so. 
So That'd be interesting. Interesting. They won't go back at the earliest until September. You mean? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I thought like yeah. until like the end of December, but um, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's still tentatively September, but we'll see. Exactly. No, I think uh, this summer is going to be explosive. Once people get back, they're gonna uh, they're gonna erupt. You know, it's all this pent up everything. And That's right. That's right. I'm gonna go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, it's going to be an interesting summer. Yeah. It'll be an interesting yeah, summer. It's going to be parties and people shaking hands and hugging. <laughs> and I missed you. Social distancing. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what shall happen. No sense <laughs> be over it now. We've, we've been angry for a, a long time. The faster you get to acceptance, the better. And that's, that's what this is. So That's right. And this has been an incredible platform for us to share and to grow right in front of your eyes and that's why we're doing it on video now oh, yes oh, absolutely and your partnership and your mentorship is so appreciated and um you know it's um I oh, brother, brother I'm telling you <laughs> thank you for that for giving me this outlet for creating this outlet inspire me to share in this outlet and for just being a totally awesome partner man like thank you for this thank you thank you thank you you are wonderful i appreciate you thank you i'm very grateful you inspire me and and uh, hopefully we're inspiring you guys too don't forget to uh listen to us on spotify itunes spotify. google podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts and uh, catch us on youtube the podcast and chill show uh the best podcast you have never heard about until now what more? Look out, Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have a pending deal coming up that will. In, in That's right. We got we got news. <laughs> kind of legal, a lot of legal stuff. <laughs> We're still sorting out the details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just the agents are. You know, we're just getting having conversations. It's early, but uh, we're open to anything right now. So. Should we just say cats out of the bag? He said nothing will change, but. <laughs> Yeah, and this is the kind of content you can't change anyway. So. Exactly. <laughs> right on, right on. The amazing, the wonderful, the maniac, the brainiac, Christopher Bernard. And Neil Quinto, the nicest man you will ever meet. He is the most intelligent real estate <laughs> investor. I'm not going to say he's beyond that. His wealth of knowledge is incredible. Please, if you ever come in contact with this man, do me a favor and let me know how nice he is. And I just want to say I told you so. Thank you so much for being who you are and sharing your passion Thank with you. the rest of us. Thank you. Be great, everybody. Have a good night. Take care. Have a good night. We'll see you again.